everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live to teach you how to paint a very simple, easy painting called Daisies and Dragonflies. All right, so we started with, I'm using a new system now, which is a trace that I do with graphite paper and the line art. So it basically looks just like this when you get it, and then you just transfer it onto your canvas with your graphite paper. So we have these really basic shapes all done for you. Basically looks just like this. So very simple and very easy. Also, let me show you the model here. There's our beautiful model. There it is. Very fun, very easy. Okay, and then we've got all of our paints ready to go and our brushes and our water. We have a picture of all of that on our website, tipsyartist.com, so you can see all of that goodness. Okay, so now what we want to do is I'm going to start with all the light colors first and then we'll fill in with all of the black at the very last. That way we don't have any uh, muddiness that occurs in our bright, vibrant colors. Okay, so in the center, we're going to start with these centers here first. And they're going to be a really pretty bright yellow. And I'm going to start with, let me show you my brushes really quick. This is my little family, so I've got my mama and my little buddy and my little bit. And I'm going to start with my mama brush here to begin with. And I've got a little amount of paint already laid out here. So I've got this bright primary yellow. And then I also have my cadmium yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and push into a little bit of both of those, keep it very bright and light. You can also add a tiny little touch of white in here too. So push all of those together. And then I will go ahead and place these here in the center. Again, very bright, very pretty. And again, this is my primary yellow, my cadmium yellow, and then a little bit of that white. And I just push into a little small section of each of those and gradually mix all of those together. Let's go ahead and do this little shape in here as well. And then once you've got your outline done around the edges, so I just hold the brush more like a pencil to do my cut-in work. Then as I feather it out, I want to turn that handle more over to the side and then just lightly feather it out over the top. So that will give me really good coverage in that surface area. Wonderful. Okay, so now I need to go ahead and paint into all the petals. All right, so I'm going to take my lovely little mama brush here, place her off into a bucket of water. That way she does not dry out. Acrylic paint will set up and dry on you very quickly, so you do want to be careful with that. And I'm going to go ahead and grab just, I've got a whole bunch of mama brushes over here, so grab another one of those. And this time I want to go ahead and paint in a little bit of a mostly white, but just a tiny touch of real soft gray in here. So what I do is I just barely take a little touch of that black, real tiny amount and big dollop of white and push that together. So again, it'll be mostly white, really tiny touch of the black. So there's just a hint of gray happening in there. And so I will go ahead and paint into all of my petals here. I'm gonna keep these really light. So again, mostly white. And then that real tiny little touch of the black. And as I'm pulling into the petals, if your brush happens to pull out a little bit of that yellow with it, that's actually really lovely. I wouldn't be concerned about that. That little highlight running through there is always a nice little touch. And I keep those lines preserved on the outer edge. All right, so we'll go ahead and just fill all the way in. And we'll be doing that all the way up through here as well. Some more of that. So as you do the first line, I would hold it again a little bit more like a pencil to do that cut-in work. 
then when you do fill in, remember to turn that handle parallel to the canvas and then just fill that in. The other thing you can do too is, I mean, I've got just this real basic white daisy look, but if you want to go ahead and do your flowers a different color, you certainly can. So the shape will be there for you with your kit, but you can certainly play with the colors and do whatever color you would like. And we do have a color mixing guide with our kits too. And I have a lot of other tutorials to talk about all that as well. So you can always look that up if you're not sure how to mix up every color. Again, this is our light soft gray, which is mostly white. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> mostly white and then just a tiny touch of the black. We are almost done with all these beautiful petals. And one more. All right, so we have our beautiful petals done now. Really nice texture over the top. Hi, Donna. <laughs> all right, so now we need to mix up some really pretty turquoise color. And I'm going to put that brush off into the water. And then I'm going to take my little bit brush here. Hi, Audrey. And then I'm going to mix up some turquoise. So here we go. Let's see here. I need to use some Viridian for this. And then a little bit. So again, that's the Viridian color. And then a little bit of some primary cyan blue. So it looks like that. All right, and then we still have a lot of white on our plate here. So I'm going to touch into a little bit of the white, pull that over here, and then a little bit of that viridian, and then a little bit of the blue. So I'll just touch into each one, pull them all together in the mix, and then that gives me my turquoise really quickly because I'm just going in about equal parts on each one of those little dollops. And if you want to pull it to more of a teal color, of course, I would push into more of that Viridian too. That'll give you a little bit more of a stronger teal quality happening there. All right, while my paint is still just a little bit wet, I'm going to go ahead and use my little bit brush and this turquoise paint to do a little accent on the petals. So I'm going to do a little twist here into that paint. It twists it out into a nice fine point. Hi, Christopher. Welcome. Yes, I had one of those mornings as well. The whole, I made it. <laughs> All right, twisting into a nice fine point and then just tiny little lines here. It almost feels like you make, it's like that parenthesis stroke that you do. So very simple. So I'll sweep this on over the top. And each one of these. And then whatever sections had maybe set up and dry a little bit more, then I'll actually work back in a little bit of white right in over the top. All right, so I'm going to take that same brush, do a quick little wipe off to the side on a little bit of paper towel just to remove that excess paint. And then I'll just touch right back into a little bit of white here. And then I'm going to gently overlap over the top of that turquoise. So see how it creates that nice soft blend over the top there. So again, little bit brush, little touch into the white and then just lightly push in. So this creates a really nice soft blend. 
very easily. So you're just overlapping right over the top while the paint's still wet. That's the other trick. Make sure that paint's still wet and then that gives you that really nice soft blend into that other color. So just white right over the top of that turquoise. Wonderful. Okay, so we have that beautiful accent now happening on each one of those petals. Um, while I still have my beautiful turquoise mixed up, we're going to go ahead and use that to apply over the tops of the dragonflies. That'll be that foundational color. So I've got my little bit here, push into a little bit of that white, a little bit of that viridian color, and then a little bit of the blue. All right, and then continue to twist into a nice fine point. And then we'll go ahead and fill in the body. And then take it down to a nice fine point there. And then I have a little trick that I'm gonna show you for the head, so we'll make that real easy on you. We're gonna use that little handle trick. So just hold the brush like a pencil, really easy hold on this one, very familiar. Turquoise has really good coverage. Now, the little head trick there, you wanna take a brush handle. Step out of front here for just a moment, there we go. Here's our brush handle. Let's go ahead and, well, guess what? I gotta mix up more of this paint. You have to have kind of a big dollop to push into, so I wanna go ahead and Mix up a big amount here. See that right there? All right, now I've got enough to work with. So then I take my handle and I dip into that bigger mixture of paint. So there it is. And then I just go ahead and press straight forward. You can even turn it a little bit to help the paint kind of splooge out to the sides and then that way I'll give it a bigger circle. So I'll do this one right over here. And if you don't quite get it on the first time, you can also just re-dip and then just reapply that pressure right over the top. Yay, so there's our little trick where we use the end of our handle. All right, wonderful. So I'm gonna come back into this mixture here with our white paint, a little bit of that white, a little bit of viridian, a little bit of cyan blue, mix it all up, makes our turquoise. Spin the handle of the brush into a nice fine point using our little bit brush. And then I'm gonna make sure y'all can see, I'll get out of the way here too, but I go into each little wing here. Take it out to a nice fine point. Let it kind of taper off. And just lift off with a light hand. Come back through here, one more sweeping second coat. This time when I do this, I hold the brush more over to the side, parallel to the canvas. And then that will give me a nice second layer that will rest right over the surface. All right, so this is looking beautiful. Now we need to go ahead and place our beautiful green in here. So I need to get some of that on my plate. All right, so I have some lovely bright yellow green. And then I will also use some cadmium green. And then I've already got my Viridian just really close by, so I will dip into some of that too. All right, so now I need another little bit brush. All right, so let me show you my plate here. I've got my 
bright yellow green, my cadmium green, and I still have that little bit of Viridian off to the side too, which I always think is very fun to work into this blend. And I've got lots of white nearby. And also that yellow, that could be really pretty too. I gotta watch this black, it is going crazy on me. It's running into everything. I don't care if it runs onto the floor, but I gotta be careful. It doesn't run into those other beautiful colors there. All right. Probably should have waited on that black before I pushed it onto my plate. Okay, so here we go. Little bits, beautiful light greens that we're mixing in here. So we've got bright yellow, green, cadmium green, a little bit of that viridian. I think I also just touched into a little bit of that yellow. I think a little bit of black snuck in there too. Little super tiny amount of black doesn't do a whole lot except just it pushes it to a sage color hi Rhonda good afternoon you know what I wasn't like late late for the whole thing I started on time of course I have a confession I snuck in this morning and I moved the date. it was set at 12 and I moved it to 12 30 don't tell anybody. <laughs> and so it was just, I was running late today. That way I could be on time for 1230. And then I was almost late for 1230. I don't know. There was just something weird about this day. And what's crazy about it is I was actually up at 345. That's kind of when my clock goes off. And I don't know. Sometimes I think it's this thing where you you think, oh, I have so much time and I'm up so early and I'm going to be so far ahead of the game. And then I got distracted with a project and I painted a table and part of my bathroom. <laughs> and my husband walks in and he goes, oh my gosh, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I just, I can't take this bathroom anymore. And I literally was grabbing acrylic paint from my paint set and just painting the cabinets. By the way, you're not supposed to paint your cabinets or your walls in your house with, a, with acrylic paint. It's, you're supposed to use latex. Oh my gosh, you went to bed at 3.30. Oh, wow. Ooh, so you're really tired. <laughs> I've done that before too. I think the pandemic is doing that to a lot of people. We're all just, our sense of time, you know, kind of depending on how you're having to adapt. Um, Everything for me is almost completely online now. And we never leave the house. And so it's just kind of a crazy thing. And I have a bathroom right now that is halfway covered in acrylic paint everywhere. <laughs> Do not listen to that lesson. That's a terrible lesson from your art teacher. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to use latex, but I think I was just trying to get a vision for what it would look like with a different color. So I just started taking what I had nearby and I just started painting all over the place in my bathroom. Crazy artist. I don't know. So now we're, now we're forced to paint. Now we have to paint it. I think that's what I was trying to do too. I was trying to make it happen. So I did. <laughs> Yes, goal starts, I know. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are in a, in a pickle, as they say, about what to do with all that. But I do have a lot of homeschool art for you. <laughs> so like, for example, with this, I do fun facts about, I would do fun facts about dragonflies and daisies. I'm keeping all the educational part of it just based on the subject matter of the theme because I feel like you get the art lesson through the actual experience of it. But the fun facts are based on that one. And then we do a little leadership lesson taking our themes using the, the symbolic nature of the subject matter in there. So we're, we're super excited about that because I know a lot of people are homeschooling this year. So. And a lot of people aren't because they feel like they would lose their minds. <laughs> so, yeah. 
totally understandable. Okay, so now we have all these beautiful colors in place for our foundation. And then what I'm going to do now is I need for this to have some setup and dry time. So now I will work in the black as promised. My black is starting to just, it wants to take over my whole, my whole plate here. So I'm going to take my little bit brush, push it off into the water over here, let it rest a little bit. And then I will come back in, still using a little bit. I'm just going to, for the sake of time, just grab a clean one here. Yes, Epic. I'm actually uh, signing up with Epic. So, okay. Yeah, I, I have to find, here's my issue right now. They require me to have this form notarized. Getting something notarized right now is not that easy. So, because my bank used to do it and then the bank's no longer open and so it's kind of crazy, but. I'm a big girl. I'm gonna figure out how to get this thing notarized. So, we'll figure it out. Surely I have a friend out there that can, you know, notarize something. All right, so I've got my black paint. We're just doing solid black. I am going to um, work in black details. So I'm going to use my little bit brush to start with, twist it here into the paint, get a nice fine point. And yes, yay, your grandkids. That's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna do this. This is a big curve around this flower. So I'm going to go ahead and use my little bit brush to do the big curve. All the way around. And then it will also kind of flow into these little, they almost look like little triangles that happen in between the little petals in here. Tiny little triangles, so we'll just barely fill into those with that black. And then take this all the way around. And I may, I think I'm gonna use a different brush to do all the longer lines because this might take a while to go ahead and come in throughout all of this with a little bit, but I'll do, I'll get a nice head start with this. All right, so again, tiny little triangles. Definitely have to work in with a smaller brush for this. And there's a line that comes through there. This is one of those cute little daisies that's looking up at the sun. Take that line all the way around. Okay. I'll tell you what else I'm going to need, the nice fine line of this. Well, every time there's a curve, I definitely need it. And then also around those little dragonflies. So little tiny curves in through here. So I just kind of keep touching down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. So I touch down and I just hold it like a pencil. Really easy hold on this. There's tiny little areas in here, so I gotta be really delicate with my hand. Make sure I don't interrupt that blue for that space of the dragonfly. Just barely working around it, be very careful. Yay. All right, we got one more over here, so I'm gonna make sure I get out of the way, because, you know, like my mom always said, what did she always say? <laughs> she said a lot of things. <laughs> you, you, is it, you make, oh yeah, you make a better door than a window. Good grief, that was not that hard. I don't know why I blanked on that. I heard it most of my life. Apparently I was in her way. <laughs> I'm blocking something. Uh, probably standing in front of the TV. You know how kids do. So again, this is our little dragonfly over here. So we're just outlining, getting that precision work done first. Here in a minute, we'll switch over to a bigger brush and we'll relax with the process a little bit.
Now I'll tell you something else, if doing really precise work like this kind of gives you a fit, you can just let it completely set up and dry and use a black paint pen or a Sharpie too. So that's another fun way to deal with some of these areas that are a little bit more um, small and precise in there. All right, so now we've got a line that comes all the way around here. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and come into this area. I'm giving this all a chance to set up and dry. So I'll work this whole circle around here. Again, really easy hold, just hold it like a pencil. And these look like the letter V that kind of came in between some of these little areas here. So tell your brain, it's like little tiny V's. And then that will help your brain relax a little bit with that process, because that's a familiar thing that we do. Another little V here. Close. Anybody out there live by the beach or get to go to the beach this summer? You never know. I have the sounds of the beach. My dream is to one day live by the beach because I was born by the beach. I was born in Huntington Beach, California. So, California might be a little too crazy for me right now. I don't know, we're in Guthrie, Oklahoma. So, it's really lovely here. I just really miss the beach. Uh-oh, I'm shedding into my paint. There we go. And then we went to North Carolina. I don't know if anybody's been there, but it's so pretty there, and they have uh, Top Sail Island and Surf City. Happy, happy music. Did you notice it went away? <laughs> it stopped. I don't know what went wrong. It went away. I guess I just didn't have it. I think I pushed play instead of shuffle. So my happy music disappeared. So now we're just listening to the sounds of the ocean waves. <laughs> Hi, Mariah. <laughs> think. Mariah, you painted this before. This is, this painting for me is an oldie but a goodie. I drug it out of the archives. I think I did this painting back in 2014, maybe. Got wild, I <laughs> just, wow a long time ago. So lots of little curves here. Kind of feels like you make little loops. You just take it all the way around. You know, I said I was going to switch brushes, but maybe not. Maybe we'll just keep going with this. This is working. I will definitely switch when I go into the background. Yay! Hi, Cindy. Hi, Rolinda. <laughs> yes, and thank you, Christopher. I think so, too. This music, or, well, this is actually isn't music. This is the sounds of nature happening in the background. 
So we do have real birds here in Guthrie. <laughs> so that part of it's legit, but So some of the nature sounds are just literally what's happening in my backyard. I'm in a sunroom and I look out over the backyard. So we do have a lot of bird sounds and wind chimes with the sounds of the ocean. Well, that may be a bit far from us here in Guthrie. <laughs> Our birds are mosquitoes. Oh, yes. Well, our birds are flies right now. <laughs> oh, man, our flies are bad right now. All right, big old loops around those petals. We don't have the mosquitoes right now. I'm so happy. That makes me very sad for you. And you live right next to me. Uh, I've been to Myrtle Beach. That's okay. I have not, but that sounds fabulous. As I mentioned, I'm from California, so I've, I used to live there, Huntington Beach, and then I've lived in uh, the San Francisco area. Very pretty areas. Um, and then I've, my favorite beach right now, like if I had to move to a beach, like had to, if I was given the gift of moving to a beach runner. Um, I would move to North Carolina, Topsail Island and Surf City. So we've been there to travel. We've got really good friends that live there. My kids loved it. And you can actually be on the beach by yourself. It is so weird. I don't know why. It's like people don't know about this place. It's this best kept secret. Like I almost don't want to tell you. <laughs> no, y'all can all move there with me. It's okay. But it is, it's amazing. Hi, Deborah. Thank you so much. So we're still working on our black outlines. This is such a fun, simple painting. I pulled it out of the archives because I thought, you know, this was one of our most favorites from 2014. And literally at every class that we had, I would have about, um, about 400 people at each class. So I thought, you know, if all those people liked it, then y'all would too. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and start to paint in the rest of our background. All this beautiful black and now I can definitely almost almost there's a little bit see there's I gotta make sure I get all the tiny details first okay so now I can switch over to my mama you're packing your stuff I know me too <laughs> it's so pretty there it's like white sandy beaches and just no one <laughs> You, you can literally, I mean, there's a few people, but it's just so weird. I've never been to a beach where you weren't just so crowded. All right, so now I'm taking my mama brush and I'm pushing it into all this pure black paint. And then we'll go ahead and then fill into all of this background. Lots of black background now. Now, to eliminate some of the transparency so at first it's okay to just kind of sweep the paint on here back and forth but I want to give it some texture and you think it doesn't matter with black paint but boy as soon as it dries you will realize how much it does matter because you'll see all these brush strokes in it when it dries it really comes out so now what I do is I take my handle pull it out to the side, parallel to the canvas, and then I do my little crisscross stroke. So it looks like I make the letter X over and over and over again. So I first want to load up my brush, get a nice dollop of paint on one flat side, and then do your little crisscross strokes right over the top. That'll give it some nice texture, help fill it all in. Eliminate any of those brush strokes that show up. Now if it 
if when it does dry, one of the things that's nice about black, is there's no mixing, so you can always come back in and paint in over the top of black, and you don't have to worry about whether or not it matches, because it will match, unless, of course, you use a different black, and then you'll have to repaint the whole thing, but that's okay, that happens. Nothing wrong with another layer of paint. It's another opportunity to have more therapy in your life. <laughs> Just lay it on. Have fun with it. All right, so I've got more of this little section here to place in. Little tiny X's back and forth. So we got a lot more black to work in. So again, just more little crisscrosses. I was gonna say, I watched an amazing movie last night and I was gonna tell you the name of it, but I can't remember the name of it. So y'all might know, it has Reese Witherspoon, Owen Wilson, uh, Paul Rudd, and it's a love story and she's a softball player. Oh, Jack Nicholson. Anybody know this movie? It's fantastic. And I thought it was a brand new movie until they pulled out their flip phones. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this movie's really old. And I just have never seen it. But oh my gosh, it was such a great movie. And I couldn't even tell that it was old enough to be a flip phone movie. But it is on Netflix right now, and it is so good. And she asked her therapist, if there's one thing you could tell me to help me with my life, what would it be? And he said, know what you want and learn how to ask for it. And I was like, that's an epiphany for me. A Tiffany epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> Figure out what you want and then learn how to ask for it. So let's all think about that today. I'm thinking about it. I want to live by the beach. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, black background, little tiny X's. How do you know? Oh, that's the name of the movie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were asking me a question. How do I know? <laughs> yes, that is. It was such a good movie. And also, I loved how mature she was in the movie. She was just like zero drama and so calm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. That's awesome. Yeah, she was just this, like normally, gosh, I almost stereotype women. Like normally women are so crazy. <laughs> don't, don't tell anybody I let out the secret. <laughs> but the, the leading lady in this movie was not crazy. Like she was so just calm and peaceful and stabilizing. And she was my hero. I just loved her in this movie. That was Reese Witherspoon. So she's awesome. Hello, Deborah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. All right, so we are almost done with our black background. Little crisscrosses back and forth. Yay, okay. So now we're getting into that really fun part where we can start to do a little bit more pattern here. All righty, so I've got a little bit of some fun stuff I can do in the centers of my flowers. And I'm gonna let all this continue. Let me do a little bit more feathering out here in the background. And we're good. Okay, so now I want my little bit brush again. And I want some of that beautiful white paint. And I'm gonna do a little twist right into that paint. And work it into a nice fine point. And I'm going to do little spiral shapes. So the best way to think about doing a spiral is think about it like you're making the number six. So it feels just like that. You should watch this movie called 
uh, Rain Over Me Adam, is that, am I saying that right? Uh, oh, Rain Over Me, oh, Adam Sandler's. <laughs> I'm doing a terrible job of reading your <laughs> statement here, but okay. So Rain Over Me with Adam Sandler. Yes, I got it, okay. Yeah, I have not seen that either. So I've been working a lot before the pandemic. I was always on the road with shows and big, huge classes. Yes, got it. And so uh, I'm behind in all my movie watching. Yeah, I'll check that out. All right, so again, it kind of feels like you make, it's either like making the number six or go the other way, the number nine. All right. And again, remember to keep twisting into your paint. That'll give you a nice fine point. And we'll do these little curly cues. It's like making a little circle and then a spiral inside. So I'll do those on the inside. I am trying to be really careful to not touch into my black. Ideally, you wanna let all that black set up and dry before you come back in with that. That way you can relax with the process a little bit. I am just going to try my best to avoid the wet black. Make these little curly cues in the center. All right, now I need to do cute little dots. So I will take my brush and dip right into the white paint and then I'll make cute little polka dots. So then I just press straight forward And I'll position these all throughout the background of my little flowers here. So again, instead of having a realistic textural effect in the center of the flower, we're just choosing to do something a bit more stylized to represent that texture. So that's why we're bringing in these little fun swirls and polka dots. So that's just another fun way to approach art sometimes. And it's very therapeutic to do that. Oh, and you know what? I wanna do these little dots in my dragonfly too. All right, so again, let's continue on with that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right, little dots. See, th these are really fun in your little dragonfly too, little polka dots. So now he's got little polka dot wings. Cute, cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a few more little accents of the white, so I'll switch back to the brush and twist it out. And then I wanna just do a soft highlight here in my leaves. A lot of beginners really like this painting because it's so, so simple. Grabbing a little bit more of that green. Kind of fill in to that bottom. You know, it pulls in a little bit of that wet black, but I actually like that, that's fun. And then I had a little bit of separation here where the black curved around here and then the leaf came there. So I'm going to connect that all the way across to smooth that out. There, that looks a little better there. And then this black, I'm gonna smooth that out a bit there too. All right. Now, I've got some white highlights I need to make just all around the whole shape of the flower. Now again, this is one of those stages where it would be better to go ahead and have all of your black paint completely dry before you work into this next step. I'm gonna go ahead and work into it, but just more with a gentle hand and eliminate, right now I'm kind of eliminating some of that, those wet lumps of black paint that I'm already seeing that might give me some fits in here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put Little Buddy off into the water. 
All right, so now I'm taking my little bit brush again, doing a quick little twist here into the white paint. And then these are just light sketches all the way around. So very light. And I keep coming back into the paint, nice little twist here. Now as I start to work into this bigger section, then I'll have to do a little bit of a loop there. Again, it's just a nice little soft outline around it to help accentuate the shape of it. And twist, and then put a loop. You see how it kind of makes it pop out to the front? So again, just a little bit of a white sketch of an outline over the top. It's real subtle. And honestly, I do have a little bit of black that's wet here. If it picks it up a little bit, it kind of softens it to a light gray, but that's okay. I'm not minding that. So it still looks really pretty. I like it. It's actually, it kind of gives it a nice, soft, subdued blend. So I think that's awesome. Okay. And I'll do a little bit more around the leaves here. Soft little line. a lot of the wet black there so what I'm doing is a little quick cheat is I'm just using my paper towels giving it a quick wipe taking that excess black off then I'll reload into the white I'm really gonna pick it up there because I just did that and then a little tiny line there Yay! All right, and then I have a little bit more to do around my little dragonflies because they're just a teeny bit lost, I think. I think they could use the help of this tiny white sketch coming in around their shape as well. So I cleaned off my little bit brush and I'm gonna do a little twist here back into that white paint. And I wanna make sure that my point's super small and I'll use a real delicate hand and just kind of lightly come in around that shape. And again, this is that little light sketch. So they don't have to connect. It doesn't have to be one continuous line all the way around it. Just again, that little light sketch. And you can do like maybe a few little, as if there's a bit of a motion of flight happening there. Maybe a few of those. All right, so again, I've got lots of fresh wet paint, so I'm gonna do a little lift off here. Just help kind of eliminate that. Pick it up just a little bit so that I can have a cleaner white line coming into that space. You shouldn't have to worry about doing this. I'm just doing this because I'm working quickly and I'm not letting it set up and dry. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the wet black paint around that surface area. I'm going to take my little bit brush, go ahead and twist back into the white. Nice fine point again. And then I'll do a quick little sketch around that little top of the head. So I just did like a little parentheses to one side and a little parentheses to the other side. And then a light sketch line kind of echoing all around the little wings here.
So let's do a few of these where it looks like a little bit of that flight motion, which is fun. Okay, man, this is pretty cool. I think I'm done here. Maybe a little line right through the middle there. But again, very fun, easy painting. So we have the whole kit for you online, so check that out. All right. So again, the whole kit we have, we've got the paint, the canvas, the brushes. We're now using graphite paper and line art for this, so it's super fun and easy. Actually, to me, it's easier than the templates. Since you don't have to figure out placement and positioning, we have all that worked out for you. So that's gonna be really fun and easy. And then, also, real quick, let me show you what else I have for you. We are doing a quick little, I'm gonna step out of frame for just a moment. Can y'all see this in here? We're doing a fundraiser with t-shirts. Yay, we have all kinds of fun new t-shirts in stock now. So we've got our hot pink, and we have black, <laughs> and we have turquoise. All right, so lots of fun colors, and we even have some lighter pink. All right, so lots of fun t-shirts we have, so y'all check that out on our tipsyartist.com. Yay, thank you so much, and thank you, Cindy, and thank you, Christopher. Yeah, it's really cute. This turned out really well. I'm really happy with it. So yes. So thank you so much for joining me today and y'all have a wonderful day. And uh, please share this with your friends and I look forward to seeing you. Uh, if I don't have something scheduled tomorrow, I'm for sure painting again on Saturday. So either day I will see you, but definitely at 1230. And y'all have a lovely day. See you soon. Mwah.